All right, back again. Hey, Connor. Um, I just went back and I made that little video that talks about packing files because we really needed to at this stage. I was still... You had access to files. I just had to be making sure that if you make open up the uh, the blend file that's in the lesson folder, then you will get exactly what you paid for. So, we are going to... I just did a quick render from the last scene that I had there. i just done a quick render and I'm looking at these bricks and I'm saying I'm not really happy with the bricks. And the reason I'm not happy with them is because they are so stark. So, what I could be doing is I could be going to my brick texture. And that's tower up here. I should call it... I'm going to call it bricks. Bricks. Because I'm going to use it in different locations. So, tower becomes bricks. And I just want to have a look and see whether or not I can get a better colour for this mortar. Um, I'd like to lighten it an awful lot. And if that's not rendered mode, then you need to go to the 3D view. And zoom in on it. And that's it there. So, it's very flat. It's very flat. And... What that means is, if we move around it, we could get the impression that these bricks are painted on. And it looks that way. There's no depth in between that mortar. That's very thick mortar. And chances are, we'd probably want to go down to something like... Uh, put a 09 in there and thin that out fairly substantially in relation to the size of actual bricks. And this we might want to lighten a bit because theirs is very white. So, you know, we don't want to draw attention to the bricks, I suppose, is the big message here. We could retexture them and put an image texture to them and I'd feel a lot comf more comfortable if I did but I would put like we've still got this situation where they've cut bricks in for doors and nobody ever cuts a brick for a door also I think these rims are a little too thin I'd like to drag them out a bit but I'm not going to get caught up with that we're going to go for a final scene on this one and then work out what's going to happen so what we're missing obviously is the trees in here and we're going to get to that what we're going to do for the moment though is just set up our scene and get a grip for what else is going on also noticing that the uh this one down here the the rim of our enclosure maybe we should make that brick as well same brick as that one just for the moment we'll give it a go let's uh go out of 3d mode because i don't need to be there uh, i'll go material and select my uh i'm in edit mode object mode select my the, the big um big structure there and go back into edit mode Always jumping between objects by going in and out of edit mode. Okay, we want to select... It's really just a couple of faces. It's that face. Hold down shift that face. That face. Hold down shift the whole way around the top. And we'll get the inside as well. We'll make that brick. We've got to sort these tree situation out. So we'll do that tonight. Um... Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the brick texture to it. Brilliant. We don't have the brick texture in this object, but we can easily put it in by going plus, new, and selecting it from the material up, down, main button. Called it bricks, that's why we called it bricks. And we assign that. And let's have a look in rendered mode. Okie dokie. That is really squeezed up. And the reason why it's really squeezed up is because we have not unwrapped the UVs properly. Our UVs on this we need to stretch out long ways. 
that's fantastic. This is a great opportunity to change some UVs. So let's uh, go out of this mode for the moment, back into material mode. We've got the actual faces selected. If you've deselected any faces, just select those faces of just those rim at that rim again. And let's go to our UV shaders. We already had it open. Fantastic. Let's unwrap. And I go, Smart UV Project. Smart UV, I thought about it today. Smart UV does almost anything. Um, you are pretty much right with Smart UV. Spheres and things like that it has trouble with. But weird shapes like this, walls, whatever it is, it'll do it. Smart UV in the unwrap on UVs and shading. Uh, I didn't need to mark seams. I'm going to undo that talk about that another day. You can put cuts when you do it. You can decide where you want to unwrap. Anyway, Smart UV. Okay. Now, can't see it yet. Need to... What do I need to do? I need to be able to see these UVs. And this UV, these UVs don't necessarily have a, a material underneath them. So I'm going to go to my UV editor I've never actually tried to do this. This is my last render result. I don't want to look at that. What do I want to look at? I'm going to look at beach because it, as soon as I open another image like this, it'll it'll show me my UVs over the top of it. I'm not saying that uh, oh, it chose concrete. Um, I'm not saying that it'll become that. Like we can go back in there in um, rendered mode. And it's still bricks. See, that's what I wanted. That's what I'm after there. So I've got to imagine that these are the bricks. And these are the... You can tell these are the walls. That's the top of the rim across the top there. So we can do something with that. And I think the main idea is to straighten them out. Quite honestly. Um, these ones need to be rotated, so I'm going to right click select that one, right click select that one, right click select that one. If you, I'm, I'm selecting our faces here, we came in in face mode, we could also just box it, hold mouse up here, B for box, down that way. Oh, I'm just noticing, uh, do I have screencast keys on? I haven't actually been noticing, I do not. I did it again. I closed the file and then I reopened the other ones. Here's the preferences. Screencast keys. We... There. And I can get the screencast keys in this menu on this side because that's my 3D view. Start display. That's where you see them anyway, just there. Anyway, okay, good. Let's have a look at rotating these. So, when we're working in our UVs, we need to G to grab. So if I want to move them, G to grab. I can move them on the X and Y axis by going G, X, and that means I can only move them that way, and that's great for control. Right click, I'm going to send it back. Or I can go G, Y, and move them up and down, so lock them so that if I want, I don't want anything side to side movement, I just want to go up, I'll just do that. But for rotate, all we got to do is R for rotate. Ah, the same thing applies if I wanted to go through uh, 90 degrees exactly from right here down to 90 degrees, I can type in 90 and press enter and that rotates it. And that, see how the bricks are going the way I want it? It wasn't going the way I wanted it, so now it is. I'm pretty happy about that. Now this one's an interesting case. This one's bent around. So what we'll do is we'll shift select all the faces. We'll try to straighten it up. Just straighten it up this way. So R, uh, I'm not sure how many degrees, we'll just do it by eye. But we can look just next to it. If I hold it very still, and don't change anything, oh, it's in a bit of a loop. I'm going to go all the way up. I think this is going to work. That's pretty straight. All right. So now, okay. 
I actually think, do I want to, no, I want them going the other way. I want to rotate 90 degrees down that way. So, we'll, uh, I'm doing this by eye. There we go, 90 degrees that way. Now they're going the way I want them to go. If I want to line up this seam here and this seam here, Actually, they're bent. Oh, yes, this is not good. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave it. All right. I'm going to leave it. And I'm only saying that because otherwise we'll, we'll mess around with things. Really good idea, right, would be to scale them a little bit. Let's scale them up a little bit. Okay. That's not too bad. Now I've got a seam down the middle of the bricks and it looks like they're too thick. That is two layers thick. I'm not upset with that. I think these are too long. See that big long brick there and that one. They're not matching up at all. But we can you can mess with the UVs. You could imagine we could squeeze this side up if I went to edge and select that edge and G and do I want the I want these ones longer so I'll go like that. And then I just got to slide it across so that go in here. See the 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 graphics card is having a terrible time, but I think yeah, I'm on GPU. It's working hard. All right. Uh, you can also select whole connected lots. See that little one there? I'm going to select that one. I'm um, down here in my vertex edge face whole lot. I'm going to right click that get the whole connected bunch of them. Sometimes you get things you don't want. I generally don't do it. Uh, I'm going to go this way and I'm going to lock it in on the uh, x-axis. So G, X. Because I'm going side. I'll be here forever, Connor. Anyway, you get the idea. You move this around. The, I wish I had a picture. If we had to put brick texture in, we'd be looking at bricks. I really should have done it. It was a. It's a mistake that I'll never forgive myself for. Um, but that's all right. That's okay. It's a brick structure. Um, it's too bright. It's too red. I'm going to move on. If you want to change the colours, please do, because I think I've done a terrible job of that. I just wanted to show you how you could add a brick struck te texture without actually putting a picture to it. Uh, I'm even going to throw in a brick texture, and you can unwrap that. You can select all the faces for brick, or go over to your materials and just go select bricks down here to select the faces when in edit mode. I'll get out of here to material mode. You know, you can you can do all sorts of things. Attach a texture to it. It's already unwrapped, so you'll be looking at this sort of thing if you choose your texture down here. You know, you'll load it up and it'll be sitting here for you and you'll mess with the textures of it. Okay, good. Now, next thing. I'm going to set up the scene. Let's go... Uh, <sighs> what do I want to do? I'm going to make this bigger. I don't like the idea that it's so small. Um, there's no reason why we should have small because this is Blender and it's massive. I've never reached the limits. Uh, you just keep extending your camera. So let's go out of edit mode into object mode and select this ground and really scale her up. Really big. I'm going to go like that. Now what, I, what, I, well, what I'll do is I'll go past my fence there. All right. And you can see where the fence can go if we want it to go somewhere, but we we'll mess with that maybe. Um, and because our camera, see that little black dot there? That's our camera. So I'm going to move. There's no reason to have anything behind the camera. So I'm going to also just move it that way. So now the camera, it doesn't matter if there's a drop off here because we're facing our object. That's the camera there. Um, and now when I go into camera mode, camera view, zero on the number pad, I don't need this anymore, do I? I'm going to go right click on it and join area and put it over there. So I've done, uh, yes, all right, good. Um, it goes sort of more to the horizon. We can look around there and now the fence is all in position. It's a much better setup. In fact, uh, we could move that fence 
all sorts of places. Let's select the... Uh, no, we don't. So, all right, moving the fence. Now, this is going to be fun because it's attached to this one. So we have to do a couple of things. We have to uh, select our Bezier curve. That's that one there. And you can just go up here and click Bezier curve. Uh, make sure, like, it was a while ago that I went to all the layers there. Um, we've got all the top layers selected. That way, everything's there. Um, select that one. Now, is it safe to move it now? Yes, it's safe to move it with both selected. So you select your Bezier curve, you select, shift, hold shift down, select this, uh, the, the fence, and then move. Because everything moves based on that. Now, let's have a look at... Uh, the Bezier curve itself. Okay, we got that selected. I know I've got it selected. And I'm going to go into edit mode. Edit mode. And now, going back to my camera, I'm going to press camera view zero. All right. I can look around this way. There's a lot to see over here. I feel like we're missing out on all this stuff. I just got a fantastic idea. This is what we're going to do. Let us uh, extend it right around here. We put some trees here, and then we pop a couple of dinosaurs in. That's the plan. Good. I'm going to try and do it. Um, so I'm going to um, start uh, on this on on the thing. Go out of edit mode in this one. Go into object mode. Select the fence. Uh, over to our spanner, our, our modifiers. I'm going to increase the count so that the fence uh, extends out along that line there. Now, if you want to move that fence, and this is very important, you want to move that fence, select it, go into edit mode, just like I was before, and move these points around. Um, be very careful to keep them on the ground, otherwise your fence will disappear underneath here. So you're just moving them using the green arrows there. You can adjust the handles to get more turn in it, uh, but never with the Z unless you're going to change the height. And we might do that, but just for the moment we'll keep it flat. So let's go... Um, and back out of there, yeah, out of edit mode, into object mode, select fence, back to spanner, there it is. Increase the count, have it come all the way around here. That's nice, we'll stop there because that's where our stuff stops. And let's also, what should we also do? We should also subdivide this I think I might uh, move my move the ground. Right click on the ground, move it across over to there because I don't need it there either. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Uh, we got some space out the back here. I don't think we got too much repetition. The camera's in the wrong spot. Let's open up this side panel. Uh, find where it says lock camera lock camera to view. We've pressed zero on the keypad. Zero on the keypad, and we're in camera view, and let's go around to there, and I'm just going to get a render, I'm just going to go F12, I want to get a bit more of that roof, F12, uh, or we can always go here, and press render that button there in the camera, F12 for me, and that fence is nice and big. We haven't textured the fence. We're going to have to jump over and do that. Um, might do that uh, before we do anything else, just while we're on the subject of texturing us still a little bit. Pretty happy with that. Mm, yeah, that's nice. Let's go... Um, escape out of there or just choose your 3d view here escape I'm gonna stop locking to camera because I'm happy with that view of the camera move that back around there let's go into the fence click on our fence and go 
uh, edit mode down here, edit mode, and I'm just going to press a uh, decimal point and zoom right in. And the beauty of this is it is all just repeated. So what we should maybe do is make this one the concrete, this one I think I'll go blue uprights and this one can be the rusty red. We'll reuse. So uh, in edit mode I want to select one of these faces. I don't want anything else selected. I'm just going to go L on that and I'm not even sure this has a material. It doesn't matter. Let's just add it. It's fine. Uh, I've selected just this uh, base. I go materials plus new and what do I want to do? I want to go to this little button here and find concrete. Concrete base, excellent. Now concrete was a texture, so we're going to unwrap it, but we're not going to worry about it because it's going to look fantastic anyway, way off in the distance. So I'm going to go unwrap and I'll go smart UV project because if I do want to go and look at the UVs later over the, over the picture, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, see, it's a rough thing, but that's a base, you know. It's pretty rough. I like it. It's okay. It's put it to everything else as well. So let's right-click on that face there and go L to select all, L, and put the blue to it. And that doesn't need to be unwrapped. We can just go plus, new, and... Blue steel, a sign. Blue steel's on that. Now we shall get all of our these ones here. So we select one, so nothing else there is selected. And L, 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 L. Six L's. And go, what do I want to do here? I want to put the red to it. So we go plus. New one, no name, not assigned, new, and what do I want? I want my rusty, I can scroll up, it's sort of weird, you, you don't get it, it doesn't go down, I've got a scroll wheel, maybe I can click, maybe clicking helps, no, see that didn't help, that did not help, um, I scroll this. Uh, I didn't really realise that, that I scrolled it. You could also type in the search, Rusty Steel. Um, we're starting to get some loose materials around on things and it's a pain. Rusty Steel, we've got those assigned and assign. Ah, also noticing that these ones are not smooth. See, we get the little ripples in there, little ripples appearing on our things. Let's smooth that out. Let's go to our UVs and shading. We're already on it. And go smooth. And just smooth things out in the final render. That'll be nice. Is that... Oh, I don't mind about that. That's fine. I want that to be hard edge. It's metal. It should be hard edge. Okay. And see, you see that it's because we're in edit mode, it's stretched out this way. But as soon as we go back into object mode... Ba-ching, she's back where we wanted it. Let's have a look at that one. Let's do a render. See, now we start to look at it and say to ourselves, okay, does it really bring it together? It's a good idea to have the same colours in a rendered shot like this. I'm still so upset with those bricks, Connor. I don't know if I can actually cope with it. I have seven minutes and I'm asking this question. Can I do a re-render on the bricks? And I'm pretty, pretty confident. I think I can. I'm going to put an image texture to these bricks. Now the beauty of this is it's already unwrapped and it will not take long. So I'm going to go to bricks. Let's, uh, I'm going to escape out of here. Oh, I'll just change down here. 3D view. And I'm going to, oh look, I'm focused on that fence, I'm all around the fence, I need to select my object here, actually I'll go the tower, and decimal point on my number pad, zoom in, I've selected the tower, yeah, good, I'm going to go into edit mode, and in edit mode, 
mode. I'm going to deselect everything by pressing A. Uh, and I am going to just select our bricks. There's bricks. It's selected. Let's select those. Okay. Now that I've got that selected, when I change to the node editor, let's go to the node editor. I'm going to have that selected there and I am going to replace this brick texture with an actual texture, a picture of bricks. And I'm pretty sure if I go into my tutorial files, where are my tutorial files? Um, textures? Yes, that's them there. All right, there's textures and Blender tutorial files. Fantastic. I'm going to add a new texture. I'm going to open up this side here. Texture, image texture. And I'm going to open. There's my textures. Do I have any? I've got roof tiles. I've got mossy ground. I got plain tiles. That could be interesting. Let's have a look at that in square. Ooh, they're not bricks. I'm not happy with that. I'm just going to pause and find some bricks. All right, that was quick. And all of a sudden, you're looking at something completely different. Uh, this is where I go to get all my textures and I went to look for some brick textures uh, because we're making bricks and I thought I better show you. So this is a website and I think it's uh, it's a good idea to um, talk to your mum and dad about um, this is a free site that allows you to download textures for free, for not-for-profit. Um, if you do use it for profit, you have to give them credit for their work in making these textures. And for people like ourselves, who just do this for fun at the moment, um, we can use them all. So you can search here and get yourself lots of textures. I get uh, leaf textures here for trees. I get You can get all of this stuff. There's endless textures here and it is cgtextures.com. What you have to do is you have to sign up for membership. It's completely free. Um, and they have never been a bother to me. Once I signed up, I never got uh, any, you know, annoying emails from people or anything like that. It's just uh, a really good source. And it's the only place I go because of that reason. You, you get a lot of places that want you to pay money or something like that. Um, and I see no reason. And there's no ads. I suppose deposit photos. There's a couple of ads. But other than that, I'm happy. Um, so that's just one of the things, but I'm going to be putting these two textures into the texture folder that will be in your lesson files. And they are the brick texture, and this one's interesting. This is the bump map, and this will make a texture bumpy like bricks without us having to model it. So, uh, oh, I also took Blender away. So uh, I'll cancel this and just show you where I'm at. We've got our image texture, we're on bricks texture, and we've got our brick texture here that we don't want. So I'm just going to drop that in there and pop that there. So I just connected up the image texture. Now I'm going to open it and I'm going to go into the textures and into... There it is. Now that's the bump map. I don't want that one. I want this one here. This is the colour, because this is our diffuse. Uh, diffuse is colour, so I'm selecting 007. I probably should rename it to bricks, just so it's not confusing. It's 007. Um, that's just the way that they name their things, and I put it in a bricks folder, so I know it's bricks. And, you know, you can look at it. Anyway, open image, and there we go. Now, I was talking about that uh, bump map, uh, the other texture. What we can do, I'm just going to, I'm going to close this up because I certainly don't want that. I don't want this brick texture anymore. Let's delete that. 
uh, delete key for that and I am going to show you another thing. First of all, we can duplicate. We are going to uh, duplicate and we don't have our duplicate menu here so it's going to be can we duplicate? Here, yeah, node, um, duplicate, delete with reconnect, we can do all sorts of stuff but I'm going to go shift D there was no shortcut key there even though I've still got it running shift D and I am going to change this picture so I've uh, doubled up on image texture nodes and I'm going to change it I'm going to click here and I'm going to change it to the 007 bump.jpg and open image this isn't going to be colour we have made this one our colour and that's fine, it'll look great but this one here is not going to be colour it's going to be non-colour data now this is sort of optional I suppose but what if I open up this side here <clears throat> just pulled across rather than down to get a side panel and 3D view let's zoom in on what we've got so far these are, these are our bricks of we, as we've laid them I should have done this from the beginning because it looks good now, if I want this to be little grooved divots, I can now take this non-colour data, which if you have a look at it, um, where have I put it, textures, if you have a look at it, it is a grey and white sort of, actually it wouldn't be a bad texture to actually put through the colour because I wanted something dull, but anyway, this white and this grey will make things rough and what the computer says is right if you're if you're a high color or a a light color i'm going to go raised and if you're dark i'm going to go sunken and it just gives this impression it is so subtle and yet sometimes can be very effective in getting you to think that the bricks and already they look far more real although i think they look too big but other than that they're great um, and I can adjust these a lot easier the UVs for doing these sort of textures when you can actually see it is a lot easier and I won't worry about that now but in our image texture node I'm going to plug this UV texture and we can take the cards not in color into the displacement now what happens when I do that is this I'm going to rendered and you get a feeling of more depth. Does that look like bricks to you? These are obviously off center. Here's the thing if I disconnect this, and I wonder, it still looks pretty good, but it's not bump mapped. Now, see if you can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. It's 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 subtle. You can see these little divots in it if you go right in, and that creates really, really, really good um, uh, textures when you're doing that sort of thing. Uh, from a distance, I suppose it doesn't make much difference, but up close, it's really good. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to realise that this fence is too far away for uh, us to appreciate all our hard work modelling it. So I'm going to bring it forward. Um, let's close off our node editor. Uh, in the middle there, join area, choose that to join and go into... Uh, oh, look at that, just jump straight into wireframe. I didn't want to do that. Um, I'm going to select the Bezier curve. I'm going to select it up here because they're a pain to select. You can grab it down on that corner there. I'm going to select my fence. I'm just going to move it closer to the camera. Let's have a look. And I'm going to go into rendered view to have a look at this. Do I need it that close? That's my question. I think I do. I think I need it that close. Um, yep, and that's going to save us a lot of drama. We've got plenty of ground going out to the back over there. Um, 
we got lots to work with around there. Our fence is nowhere near as long as we need it. It would be good if we could have the fence disappear uh, from close to far away. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back into... Oh, what's my time? 34. Okay. Uh, material. And I am going to select my Bezier alone now. Just select my Bezier. Click up on Bezier. Grab him over there. And go into edit mode. And I'm going to move the... I'm going to move this one in the center of those two handles. I don't want to move the handle. I want to move the whole thing. Um, I'm going to move that there. See, come across there and move it up to about there. And this one, the center of those, those other two handles, green arrow, move it back like that. And maybe that way. And I'll get that, move that handle. Now I'm moving handles. I can come back to about there. All right, let's have a look. If I go to my camera mode. Mm, see, I see it in the background there. I've sort of doubled it up. It makes it close and far away. I'm gonna have a look at F12 on that one. Uh, render, sorry, if I hit that one there and just go render there. It's pretty smooth, certainly coming together. Trees are our big task here now. Half an hour more of adding trees and dinosaurs. See, I like having that, the, the, the idea that it's off in the distance there. So let's have a look at that. Let's uh, escape out of that render. And just what's happened is it's just worked out nicely. And it's possible that you could have this twist back there a lot earlier. Like it might not have to be so subtle if you... Yeah, if you were to take it from out the back there and pull it right across to about here, you'll get a lot more advantage out of the idea that this thing curls around. It's a it's a curling fence. You could go like that and maybe extend it out that way. And then you just have to add a couple more. Uh, what could we do? See, we can subdivide this. We can... Let's go, uh, I'm just going to move it back in here. I'm going to move this handle. This handle has gone all twisted. Yes, all twisted. There we go. This one is that way. And I can extrude this out. I can have the, I can have a twist like that. And so that it just doesn't finish there, I'm going to select this uh, vertex here. Um, right on the end, not one of the handles, and E to extrude, or I think it's up here, tools, yes, extrude, there it is. I'm going to E extrude, now it's weird, I'm going to let it snap back, right mouse button to let it snap back, and now if I move it in, these handles are way too long, it'll shorten handles. Handles can get very long when you extrude and you mess with things and you've got to be very careful not to touch that blue arrow because we're still very flat on our thing. That's why we did right mouse button, let it flick back because when you extrude it can go anywhere, especially if handles go down. We don't want that. All right, let's have a look at that. Yes, I'm happy with that. I'm going to do F12 where you can click render here in the camera. I'll hit that. And take full advantage of our modeling. We change the scene after you look at, a, at, a, at, at, our, at our Blender scene in the picture, the idea that we were going to work for. You change your ideas about what you want yours to look like. 
Um, and it's only just when you're modeling all the pieces that you're trying to, you know, fit fit to what they want you to do or the, to what they did so that you you get control over what your project is. I'm noticing these uh, bricks need to do some work. Um, we may have a clean up, uh, a bit of a clean up, but see, that's just not right at all. That's, that's not going to work uh, in any for shape or form. I'm going to have to unwrap that again, I'm afraid. I cannot cope with that. Anyway, um, let's go... Hmm. Let's call that at 40 minutes. And uh, next thing we do is going to be put trees in just around the place. I'm just going to put some trees in. I think that it's a, it's a, it's where you get in yourself into some pretty intense um, stuff, and we're not going to model the trees. I'm just we're just going to use some models that I've got, just like the the dinosaur. Um, I can show you how to make a tree, but that will be for another day because that's an interesting texturing job. That, um, but I've got a few trees in stock that I made, and it'll it'll help things out. Anyway. That's a good place to stop, and I shall see you in the next tutorial coming up for me in about half an hour. <laughs> but for you, heaven only knows how long. Take your time. Uh, this is all for fun. See you later, Connor.